Hi, Jason here. So I'm making this short video just to answer a question that I get asked from time to time and that's uh, how much space you need to build a cedar strip canoe uh, or a cedar strip boat. And I guess it depends a lot on you know whether you're building a canoe or a kayak or a rowboat or other type of boat using a wood strip method. Uh, but uh, to answer the question specifically on a canoe, uh, you know, or kayak, because they're pretty similar in dimensions. Uh, for size, you're going to want to have, uh, you know, if, if you're looking at a canoe about the same size as the one uh, to my right here, um, this is a prospector canoe that I make, and uh, this, this is 16 feet long, and so to build a 16 foot canoe similar to this, uh, I need to have at least three feet at each end of the boat as well as at least three feet on each side so that I can work around it. Uh, you got to remember if you haven't built a canoe before, uh, you're going to be building on a, what's called a strong back and that building form uh, can't be moved around when you're doing the, the initial uh, strip build and epoxy, okay, fiberglass and epoxy. You're, you're gonna need to keep that boat still and stable until it, it's a solid haul or you risk twisting the boat or, you know, adding, you know, a bend to it and uh, then you might find yourself, you know, canoeing in a circle all the time because your canoe's gone bent. So uh, that, that's the, the nutshell of uh, the size requirements, but the question really should be what type of environment do you need to build a, a cedar strip boat? And uh, to answer that, uh, that, there's a few considerations that uh, you have to um, take. And the, the one is that you need to have some form of heat or you're gonna be limited to only building a few months of the year if you're in northern climates like I am here in uh, Gray County, Ontario. Uh, so, it, you know, in this area, it's only, you know, we have four seasons, so it's only summer a quarter of the year. And uh, the, the minimum temperature really to be building a cedar strip boat is around 15, 16 degrees Celsius. So that's 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the reason is because you, you want your, you're going to be gluing the, the cedar strips and you want that glue to dry, um, you know, and not, not freeze or not take forever. Um, but also more importantly is when you get to the fiberglass and epoxy, uh, the minimum temperature for working with uh, at least West System epoxy is around the 15 degrees Celsius mark. So that, that's the, the recommended minimum. All right, so it's the same. You, you want to have a, a working environment that you can maintain that. And really, that, that's your personal comfort too, right? We don't want to be out working in a shop and it be minus 10 degrees in the shop. You know, it's going to be a miserable experience. Uh, so the other thing is ventilation. We're going to be creating a lot of dust uh, when we're doing, you know, the sanding, there's going to be lots of sanding, so there'll be lots of dust. You want good ventilation, as well as when we're working with the epoxy, you want to be able to uh, vent out those fumes. And and also, and I, not that it's necessarily worse, probably the same when it comes to uh, health, uh, but I, I particularly find that uh, the fumes from working with the varnish are... Uh, to me, incredibly strong. Uh, and so you want to be able to vent those fumes out as well. Okay, so along with ventilation, I, I wouldn't recommend building a cedar strip canoe inside your house. I remember when I was uh, much, much younger, I thought that I would uh, build my first canoe just, you know, in my living room or kitchen. And I'm glad I never went ahead with that because I'm sure that once I got to the epoxy and, and finishing, uh, you know, I probably would have found myself passed out on the floor from inhaling all the fumes. And, and especially, you know, if you, you're living with other people and pets and, you know, children or whatever, you don't want to expose them to that. So, so along with ventilation is I wouldn't recommend building them inside your house, but also uh, to have some sort of barrier between 
the two. So if you are going to build in your garage make, and it's connected to your house, make sure that the door is closed when you're, when you're working so that the dust and fumes don't go into the house because you're just allowing that contaminant uh, to affect other people's lives. So the other thing is lighting. You want to have a lot of lighting. Uh, if you don't, what's going to happen is uh, you know you will have finished your boat in a dim environment and then you take it out side inside it looks great you take it out and then the the natural light from the sun hits it and you find that you've missed a whole lot of scratches or you know perhaps you have some you know small flies in your finish or you know anything that you might not notice okay or bubbles or anything like that that if you had uh, good lighting you'd be able to pick up as you were working. Uh, another thing is that you want to have a level floor so uh, if if you're working in a, a garage an older garage or a barn or you know something like that and you know maybe it's got a gravel floor or a dirt floor um, or even uh, if the concrete is old, if it's got a cement floor and maybe there's cracks and it's, it's heaved or lifted or sunk in spots, uh, that might not be the best environment because when you set up your strong back, it needs to be uh, very level and true from end to end or else again, your forms are going to be crooked and uneven. So an uneven floor is all right and in fact, probably every floor is uneven to some degree. Um, but just when you're setting up your strong back check and you might have to shim, uh, you know, different spots of your, uh, your strong back footing just to make sure that you get it level. If, if you can't get it level with a few shims uh, and secure them so that they don't fall out of place, then it's probably not the best location. Uh, the other thing is, uh, and it's kind of funny because it, it's a dust-free environment. We're going to be creating tons of dust, all right? And uh, you'll realize it as soon as you start doing your sanding. Uh, tons and tons of dust. You'll be cleaning it up for sure. And uh, if you have a spouse that doesn't, uh, you know, like dust, then that's another thing to consider. But to find a dust-free environment is important because, uh, as an example, if you're if you're planning to build in an outbuilding like a barn, and if it's uh, you know it could have cobwebs hanging down from the rafters or just be you know a working barn dusty, um, as you get to your epoxy and your uh, varnishing stages, that dust is going to end up in your finish and. Uh, it will be very disappointing uh, if you do a good job with the, the stripping and, you know, all other uh, uh, elements of design and, you know, the look of the boat and, and struggle with getting a nice finish without a lot of dust showing up, okay? In, in a controlled environment that begins dust-free, we can clean it, all right? I clean my shop all the time. I sweep up the floor and sweep off the, the, the surfaces. Uh, dust on the boats. I, I walk through the shop, you know, a few times a day and if there's dust on the boats, I wipe it off regardless of what stage I am in construction because I know that as I walk around, I'm going to uh, stir up that dust, all right? And then when I do get to the epoxy stage, it's going to find its way over to the, the boat that I'm working on. So. Uh, so starting off with a, you know, a, as close to a dust-free environment as you can, it's a lot easier to control it. If you're going to build in a barn or something like that, then like you have options. Clean it up, you know, the best that you can, or or maybe uh, you know staple up some uh, like plastic or poly sheeting above you to to catch the dust that falls from above. Um, you know, create some kind of tent system to you know, to eliminate the dust that could get blown in. Uh, yeah, so so you got options there. But anyway, I thought I'd just make this quick video on, you know, what type of environment is good to build a sear strip boat, and I hope it helps.